Gannon is my middle son, and he was affected at the age of three, just before his fourth birthday, was diagnosed with autism. And as many of you know, it's, it's, it's devastating. You don't know where to turn. Um, it can be very, very lonely. It can be very, very painful. As I shared with some of the people that I've talked to here today, I, I felt like I didn't even belong in the autism community. My first, my first support group meeting I went to and I sat at a restaurant with about eight other moms and they were sharing stories of Chuck E. Cheese and Disneyland and I went out in the parking lot and I just cried my eyes out. Because those things were not an option for us. Our, my son was a runner. Unless I had him attached to me with a leash, I, we couldn't go out in public. And I didn't want to have my son on a leash. He wasn't an animal, he was a beautiful little boy. So we just didn't go to those places. He would also bite little girls and push them down, and I didn't want him harming another child. And I just, I just remember that feeling of loneliness in the parking lot. And where do I belong if I don't belong in an autism support group meeting? So I prayed about it and uh, I found another group. I didn't give up. That's one thing that I love to share with people. No matter what you're going through, you can't give up. It's just, it just cannot be an option. If that group is wrong, or if that physician is wrong, or if that therapist is wrong, you go knock on the door of somebody else. Because you will build your tribe and you will heal or greatly improve the life of your child by not giving up. Everybody asks me, what, what were the three things that were, you know, the most monumental for you in treating your son? And I have to start out with number one being prayer. Because I would not be where I am today without it. Once I started relying on God, and I had a, a, a conversation with him that I needed his help and that I was going to share our story of recovery with others. If he helped me, that's when things started moving. That's when the ball started moving. All right. Amen. Also, the deal I made was, please protect my son. Because I'm sure all of you have been through this. Most of us have the, um, the denial in the beginning. And you don't want to get up there and speak about your child having autism because you don't want them following him or her the rest of their lives. You don't want them labeled. And I just want to tell you, it's just a word. It doesn't mean anything. You need, and there is no time to waste in denial. You've got to just take that diagnosis and say, okay, what do I need to do now to combat this disorder, to get through tomorrow? to bring healing, to bring improvement to my child's life. I meet people every day. Recently, I've met a lot of them in the last couple weeks, that when I share my story of my son being recovered, they look at me like I am an alien from another planet. They have no idea that recovery is possible. They have no idea that improvement is possible. I met a lady the other day, and her son just was diagnosed, and she really had no idea that there was anything that they could do for him. Her physicians told her, you need to put him on medication, he may be institutionalized someday, and that's all I can help you with. Really, not in today's day and age. Not with the women, the moms, these warrior moms like you that are sitting right here. Absolutely not. You need to go find your tribe, as Julie said, you need to find children that are kind of like yours, that you have things in common with. That's what I needed to do. You know, the first group was awful. My child was nothing like any of their children. But I eventually found groups that had children that were more like my son, Gannon. Diet was huge for us. My son was almost four years, well, he was four years old at the time, couldn't speak a sentence. We removed gluten from his diet because I had read on the internet that it might be, uh, might be causing a problem with my child. So I called up his teacher and I said, you know, we need to remove all the gluten from his diet. He's not allowed to eat anything unless I send it. And she said, Mrs. Shear, I just need to tell you that there's no scientific proof that diet will do anything for your son. 
And I said, you know what, that's okay. I don't need scientific proof. I don't need a stack of paperwork that's been prepared by um, who knows who knows who prepared it, right? I need to know what has helped children recover. I need to know about the warriors that have gone before me. What have they done? What have they seen improvements with? Well, gluten seemed to be coming up, coming up, coming up on the internet, and I thought, well, you know, that's a great place to start. Let's give it a whirl. Well, three weeks later, he spoke his first sentence. And as moms of children with special needs, I know the only thing that we want is just to hear our babies tell us that we love, that they love us. You know, I was always, Ken, and I love you so much. You wouldn't get a, a glance. You wouldn't, you were lucky if you got a groan or a moan. And on that, literally the, that third week, the day of that third week conclusion, we were down on the floor. And I said, I love you, Cannon. And he stopped. And in slow motion, it was, as, it was as if he heard me for the very first time. He was four years old. And he looked at me, kind of gazed, and said, I love you too, Mommy. And I knew we were on the right track. Yes, I knew we had a long journey in front of us. But I knew we were on the right track. And if you're a parent of a nonverbal child and you you just hear them say ma or da or anything, any type of improvement, you need to celebrate it, hold on to that, build upon it. Because with that is going to come more recovery, more positive experiences. We cannot ever, ever give up. We had his annual IP uh, a couple months ago, and the psychologist was looking at the paperwork, and he just said, I, I don't understand how this child right here was ever in a self-contained classroom. And I said, you know, you need to remember this. And you need to tell your parents that hope is real. Because he still was in the mindset that these kids don't get better. In fact, the entire team says, Mr. Shearer, we never see this. We don't see ASD kids graduating out of the, pro graduating out of the program. We don't, we don't see it. That is a miracle. And I said, okay, now you need to remember this and you need to offer hope to your parents. You're here for a reason. You have power, you have strength, even though there's days when we just feel like we can't go on another day. We will. Everybody, everybody in this room will. And you have to hold on to that. And you have to remember who it is you're accountable to. That was a huge turning point in Gannon's recovery. Because we have so many people out there that want to give us advice, don't we? Friends, neighbors, therapists, you know, in-laws. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And I've seen people not help their children because of what other people have told them. I've seen it a lot. You need to go into your child's room at night when nobody's around. Look at them. And come to the realization that that child is the only thing that matters. For me, my faith, my child, that's, that's it. I'm not accountable to anybody else. Nobody else is going to be ch changing my child's diaper when they're, ten, when they're 10 years old. Nobody else is going to be answering that phone, getting the call that your son just bit a child and drew blood. They're not getting those calls. They're not caring for your child. You are. So you need to stay strong and stand up and say, this is what I'm doing for my child. And if you can't support me, then we'll see you later. Because I need to be surrounded by people who are going to support me and to be positive. You need to surround yourself with positive people. People that are always looking for solutions, that are always looking for something that can help their child just become a little bit better. And my prayer for all of you is just improvement, health, 
wisdom, courage, and determination to never, never give up. It's just not an option. And as the doctor was saying, don't forget about yourself because if you deteriorate, there's no one to take care of those babies. So we need to keep coming to events like this. We need to stick with our tribe. Stay positive. Take time out for yourself. Even if you schedule 10 minutes, you know, in the closet where nobody's bothering you. Take that time to just sit and be quiet. Say, I got this. I got this. I can go another day. We're going to get through. Thank you so much, ladies, for coming. God bless you all.